Stephen Timms, the Financial Secretary to the Treasury, asked him why, despite Gordon Brown's promise not to reward failure in the city, the government had allowed Sir Fred Goodwin to walk away from RBS with an enormous pension. Paul Winders did not agree to uh, any reward for failure. Indeed, uh, I think this is, particular case is a flagrant example of exactly what the Prime Minister was condemning, a kind of reward for failure culture that we need to sweep away and that has been a, a, a major source of the problems we've seen in banking in the UK and around the world uh, over recent months. But Lord months. Miners was there when it was agreed. He agreed to it. No, he, he wasn't uh, and he didn't. He was informed that uh, Sir Fred Goodwin had a contractual entitlement to this very large pension. It turns out that actually uh, wasn't the case. But he uh, didn't check at the time, did he? Well, he, a whole load of issues were covered in a, a short time. Uh, he was informed this arrangement was in place. It turns out, in fact, that the old board of RBS, at least some of its members, uh, agreed to effectively double the pension pot which uh, Sir Fred Goodwin was entitled to draw right. from. But why didn't he check? Why didn't the lawyers for the Treasury check? I mean, Paul Myers was a pension fund manager in Gartmoor in the 1980s. He was chairman of a pension fund company. He knows this stuff. Well, he was given the clear impression that the board had an obligation to pay this very large amount I immediately. So he was it misled. Now, it, now, it, it, it now turns out that was not the case. Is there anybody on the current board who took part in those discussions who may have misled the minister? No, the members of the board who were involved in the discussions are no longer on the, the board of RBS. Certainly it is the case that Paul Mines was given uh, a mistaken impression. You know, you've made it clear you, you dislike all this, but Lord Miners joined the government on the 7th of October. These discussions took place on October the 11th. So after four days in the job, you let him get on with it himself. I mean, was he out of his depth? Is the whole Treasury completely incompetent here? No, certainly not. Uh, we were given an impression that was mistaken. We were given the impression that there was a contractual obligation on the part of the board of RBS. It's now clear that there wasn't. But four days in the job, I mean, why, why wasn't he under adult supervision? Well, there were Treasury officials involved as, as well as ministers. It wasn't a, a, a minister on his own. Uh, there were lots of topics covered. This one was uh, raised in those discussions, and Paul Miners and we were given a mistaken impression. Um these two go back quite a long way, though, don't they? I mean, uh, Fred Goodwin uh, was part of RBS in 1999 when it took over at NatWest, where Lord Miners was on the board. I mean, th the impression of all this is this is the sort of thing that goes on in the city all the time. But this is now public money. It's our money. And it seems to many people quite disgusting. Well, that's the view that I share. I think it's wholly inappropriate that such an enormous sum was paid. Uh, at the point when this bank was clearly in a state of collapse to its outgoing chief executive. I, the view that has been expressed by members of the public today is one that I and the government absolutely share. There must be no rewards of this kind for uh, failure. You've, uh, you've made your position clear. Lord Miners says it's unfortunate un and unacceptable. Um, uh, Fred Goodwin should give back some of this pension, but can you do anything to force them to do so? Is there any legal action or any other kind of action you can take? Well, UK Financial Investments, which manages the government's shareholding in RBS, is auditing very carefully currently what possibilities there may be for legal action on the part of the government. I should say that uh, Sir Fred has uh, uh, written today to the Treasury to indicate that he is not prepared to forego the, uh, the pension which he currently receives. Paul Miners has written back to him calling on him to think again. Um, just a final point. You can see why that in the great scheme of things, actually, Sir Fred Goodwin's payments are almost loose change because today you're talking about £325 billion as a potential bailout for this same bank. And if we can't trust you with the small matter of this pension, how are we going to trust you that you've got this bigger matter right? Well, this is a very important announcement that we've made today. It's a guarantee scheme for assets 
uh, that RBS holds on its balance sheet. Uncertainty about the valuation of those assets has been a key part of the reason for lending not happening. Do you see this as a turning point? I mean, is that what you hope for? I, I, I think it is. We made a series of announcements in January about the steps we needed to take to uh, enable lending to resume. This was a key one. We've announced the details of it today. Uh, and I think we are going to see uh, very uh, important progress on lending as a result. Mr. Timms, thank you very much. Thank you.